Welcome to today's information session or fast snapshot series session on RFRI Viewer, the other features. So today's session is a focus on probably some of the less common features or yeah. ones that people don't necessarily use on a regular basis in an IETP. So we thought we'd uh, do a little snapshot of some of those. So my name is Tammy Holter. I will be hosting the session today. Miss Rita Nye, of course, will be doing our software demonstration. Welcome, Rita. Hi, Tammy. Today's session will run for approximately 15 minutes, although we've probably been going to, for 20 on a lot of them because there's a lot of discussion, you know, about specification and other issues with these sessions. These are being made available on the Skills My Class portal for customers to access at any time. So let's kick off today. So what we're going to cover in R4I Viewer is taking a look at an encrypted IETP. Yep the skins, so what's your favourite interface, so <laughs> some people may not realise that you can actually adapt the look and feel of r Viewer. Uh, taking a look at an IETP that contains different versions of HTML and XML content in one IETP, sometimes people think you can only have an IETP that has one version yeah. of S1000D. Um, we can have a mix and match and even HTML and XML, don't, don't mind. And we'll take a look at a multi-directional hotspotted um, IETP, so taking a look at um, graphic linking to content and, and the content linking back to um, the image yep. spots. We're going to take a look at um, toggling to touch device interface. So, you know, we can, of course, if you've loaded up an IETP and you're working on a particular touch device, you want it with the bigger buttons or the uh, finger touch, you can um, toggle that on the fly if you like. Language switching, so this is one um, people don't realise, so we do have different languages for the uh, IETP interface and um, so if you might have started it up in default of English and then you want to toggle it over to French or something, you can do that. We're just yep. not changing the content with that, we're just changing the interface. That's right, <laughs> although we will show you how you can if you want to um, via the custom IETP desktop shortcut as well. One of the things you might be wanting to do is load up um, filtered content that is specific with language um, as well. So we'll take a look at that with the last one, which is the um, IETP desktop shortcut for each IETP. So on that note, I am going to hand over to you, Rita, to kick off the demonstration. Okay, so this is an IETP that is an encrypted IETP. So I'm going to cover a couple things mm -hmm. on this particular one. Yep. Um, so the first thing we can see is that in my TOC, I've got mixed content. Mm. Yep. So I've got byte content from SGML all the way through to XML. Yes. Um, by 2.0 or 2.2, 3, 3, 4, yep. 4.1 or 401. Yep. Um, but you could also have ATA SGML. Yep. You could have DITA XML. Standard. Yep. Any yep. SGML or XML can all get mixed into one IETP. As long as you've got a style sheet that covers it, you're good to go. Absolutely. Yep. So that thing gives you that functionality of being able to reuse that legacy data mm -hmm. inside a new IETP. Yes. So we can have mixed content quite nicely. Lovely. Okay. Now the skins. Um, with the latest versions of Viewer, mm -hmm. and this has just fallen into line with the rest of all of our product faces. Suites. Yes. Yep. Um, if you go to your Options tab, you'll see that there's a Skins option. Mm -hmm. And when you open up the Skins option, you can see all the different skins that are available for you to choose from. Okay. Okay, so this can be per person. Yes, okay. Or per instance of um, viewer installed onto a Windows machine. Yes, okay. Okay, yep. so it's not unique to an individual user. user. Yep, that uses it's, it. It's on the machine. It's on yep. the machine. Yeah. So at the moment it's set to the default at the black, which I'm a very boring person and leave it at the default look. Yep. But if you need to have a little bit of fun and you need a little bit of sunlight in, and summer in your <laughs> life, in your life, <laughs> you can then choose summer. Yep. And it will then change that interface to a summer oh, presentation. Oh, look, it's got a little sky with a sun in it. Well, if you need that. Oh, it's got like a beachy theme down the yeah. bottom. 
in the status bar. <laughs> or if you need, you can go to a Christmas. Oh, you know, because seasonal. So I noticed we've got the Halloween one there, yes, the Christmas one. They're do. very popular, very <laughs> popular, yeah. Okay, so if I change it to Christmas, You'll see that there's um, it's packaged up nicely with a little ribbon. That's it's the very one. Very cute. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so depending on your uh, what you're into, <laughs> yeah, <as laughs> the skins are popular. <laughs> I'm boring, yeah. and I like mine set to the black interface. Mm -hmm. But you can choose whatever interface you're wanting to choose with that. So we can then allow that function. Mm -hmm. Now this isn't something that you can turn off or turn on. Mm -hmm. It is a default presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that then gives you that function. Now, if I went and clicked on open, this is the IETP that I've got at the moment. Yes. And it's forcing me to put in the password. Okay. okay. To be able to open the IETP. Because this is an encrypted did, password, right? Correct. Yep. So that means that if I navigated to the back end yep. and tried to open up any of the files, yep. I wouldn't be able to read them. Yep. Because they're all going to be encrypted. encrypted. Yep. Yep. Okay. They will get decrypted by our Fry viewer. When Once you, you put in the password and it logs it in. Yep. Yeah. So that's when you get this structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just going to jump into an IETP mm -hmm. um, just so that we can see some extra. So features. what's the scenario uh, that you would be encrypting an IETP? My first one would be if you're sending it by snail mail. Mm -hmm. So you, you've put the ITP onto a CD and shipping it in the post and you don't want someone to see the content. Yep. And so just in case that got lost in the post, you Correct. wouldn't want people to access the content. And I guess in a classic um, defense environment, even if it's not necessarily shipped, but as it's you know passing through maybe networks or what have you yep. until even they get it. if you're it. doing an FTP transfer or a file download, yep. you want to make sure that you're protecting your data. Mm -hmm. Okay. The big trick, of course, is making sure that when you send that information, you're not sending the password. With it at the same time, that kind of defeats the purpose. Kind of defeats the purpose, yes. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, okay, so next one. Okay, so next one is the bidirectional hotspotting. Hot spotting. Okay. Which is a really big, powerful one. Mm -hmm. So this is some customer content that we're allowed to display. Yes. And this is a particular data module that is an IPD. If we have a look, you can see it's a 941. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is, if we go back to our very first session, IPD manager. IPD manager. Yes. So that content needs to be created. And then depending on the content, determines how it's going to get presented. Yes. Okay, so with this, we've got bi-directional. So this is a very modern look and feel compared yes. to a lot of other presentations. Particularly for IPD, people still go sort of old-fashioned look. Yep. Yep. Now, this particular look here, this is actually controlled by a JavaScript, a jQuery JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So, so style sheet and a style sheet for certain functionality references the JavaScript. Correct. Yep. And so now, if I point to the hotspot in the graphic, yep, you can see that it highlights the, the row for you in mm -hmm. the row in the table. Yep. So you can then navigate around, and as you move to different hotspot numbers, yep, it highlights. The that road for you. It's like, okay, that's that part over there. Yeah. Yep. If we do it from the table, it does the same thing. Mm -hmm. So as you point to the different so if we rows, click on the row, yep. you'll see that the hotspot numbers are highlighted. Mm -hmm. So it gives you that bi-directional control yep. to help you with that particular function. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which, of course, actually leads me to one that we didn't put down. Yep. It's a shopping cart. Yes, so um, again, it, it's, a, it's a component that's, you know, one of those features that you would use a JavaScript for, but Correct. it's a sort of, people have, it's one of probably the most popular things to do with IPD data at the moment, I Correct. think. You want to get a list of all the parts that you need, yep. so you can literally add them into the shopping cart list, yep. and it'll just keep on adding that information in, mm -hmm. and this one's set so that it will physically print. Yep. But it's up to... It might be shoot an email. It might be send yep. it off to a command in an ordering system. It might be, it could be depending anything. on what it is. So, yeah. yep. so you can do a shopping cart function as well mm -hmm. so that you've got that list of parts that you need to take with you yep. to do this repair. Perfect. Okay. So it's very, very basic, very simple, yep. um, and it's a nice, clean interface to yes. do that. Yep. Now, we looked at wanting to be able to change to a touch environment. Yes, yes. So this is, um, we've opened up the ITP, but this time it's on a touch device and okay. um, we don't have a tool for pointing. We don't have, have a stylus. little stylus. 
So we've got to be able to use our fingers. Okay, yep. so the first criteria with that, we're talking about a Windows operating system. That's true. So, yeah, so we've got Windows Touch devices, yep. obviously. So yep. you're looking at things, a laptop that's got a touch screen or a Surface Pro or any of those. So what happens is on the condition it's been enabled during your media gen process. Yeah, because it's like everything else, it's a feature that you have to set when you generate Correct. your IETP. Yep. We have a little touch UI button. Yes. And when you click onto that, it changes not just the interface, mm -hmm. but you'll actually see now that the menus are slightly... Well, everything's spaced it's out. It's all spaced out yep. to allow for mm -hmm. the finger. Yep. Because the finger tends to be a little bit fatter yep. than your, your mouse, mouse. Your yep. mouse and your cursor. Yep. So you can then change that. And you can see we've still got all of our menus exactly the same as what we had previously. Mm -hmm. And all the functions are there. It's just they're presented in a slightly different way yep. to allow for, for being able to touch it. a yep. touch function. Yep. Take it back to default. Turn Simply back off the little pointer finger. Turn off the finger. Yep. And you're back to a standard presentation again. Yep. Okay. So that gives you that touch capability. The second last one is to change your language interface. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the actual physical menu items, mm -hmm. not the content. That's right. Although, obviously, the, the two would normally go hand in hand. You would think if you're going to you would think. provide a French interface, you'd probably have some French language data modules as well. Absolutely. But putting that but aside for a second. Putting that aside for yep. a moment. Yeah. Okay. So, again, in our options section, mm -hmm. if it's been enabled, so, again, it's a control okay. that turns you on. You have to decide if you're going multi-language. Yep. Yep. You get three choices. It's either default, yep. which means that, oh sorry, none, which means it's only English and English only. Yep. You've got default, which is that whatever is your default language. In your it, data modules? No, no, in your computer. Okay, oh yes, okay, yep. yep. So I might have a default language because of French. Yep. yep, okay. So if it's one of the languages that we support, yep. then the interface will automatically default Select it. to that right. one. Yep. Or you can have user selection. Okay. Okay. When you've got user selection, this language drop down, it becomes available. Mm -hmm. So these are the languages that we support at this point in time. So yep. we've got default, which is English, yep. thankfully. Yeah. We've got French, Russian, Turkish, Spanish, Portuguese, and German. Right. Yep. Okay. So we can then select any one of these. And what it will do is it will change the interface. So the menus, the buttons are going to change the language. Like you said, the content will remain whatever it was. Correct. Yeah. Now there's a proviso with that. Mm -hmm. Inside the MediaGen window, where we name our tabs. Yes, that's right. Yes, when you are generating the IETP and you yep. do custom configuration of yeah, what you're putting on the tabs. Yep. If you do custom configuration of the tabs, we don't change those. Mm -hmm. We leave those in English. Because you customise them. Because yeah. you customise them. Yeah. But if they're left to the default... We'll also translate those. We'll also translate those as well. That makes sense. But you can see there that... Because that would require us to translate on the fly, basically. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that could end up quite interesting. <laughs> it could become quite problematic. Yeah. Okay, so you can see that we've changed that interface mm -hmm. to represent those changes. Uh, okay. My Spanish is not, not good. good. Okay, so, so I'm going to change back to English. Good idea. Okay, so the last feature that's available is one that people possibly didn't even realise no. was there. Mm -hmm. So when I go to open, you'll see here that I've got a little cursor at the end. Mm -hmm. For navigating. A little arrow. Yep. What that does is it actually creates a desktop shortcut. Mm. So you can have... So that IETP you've just been looking at... I can physically create it as a shortcut on my desktop. Right, okay, yep. Which means that if you're producing an IETP that has to be in French, English and Spanish... Yep. You can create all three. Yep. Set them all up crea and create a shortcut for them. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as an operator, you can walk up and if you prefer to see information in French... Yep you can double click onto the French icon. So this time we are talking about content. So we've we've actually written content. Correct. And we've we've generated an ITP with appropriate filtering where we're only getting French content. And then we've gone open the ITP, test it, yes, that's the French content. Create a shortcut on the desktop 
we're calling it French, then we go do the same thing, generate a German one, and then we Correct. create another desktop. And so the user, so this is a, a scenario where we've got devices that we're walking up to that we might be in an environment where someone you know, could have it's a, a completely area. different language. That's yep. right. So it, it might be in a particular defence zone where we've got lots of um, people with different um, first language being something other than English. Yep. And so we want to provide the content in all of those languages. So we'd see the icons on the desktop of the ITPs. Is that right? Correct. And you can even get more advanced than that. Okay. Okay. So when you're building your ITP, yep. One of the options you've got inside the Media Gen window is to choose your ISO file. Okay, yes, okay, so a little custom icon, right? Yes. Yes. So if you don't select one, the little icon is, Will the, be Alpha viewer. I, is the Alpha Eye Viewer icon. Okay, but that's not obvious, is it? Otherwise, you've kind of got to set up Alpha Eye Viewer icons and then a custom name. Correct. Yep. You've got to literally look at the name of it. Yep. So what you can do yep. is when you build the IETP, yep. Insert your own custom icon, icon. And, and obviously a flag or something with the appropriate language might work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or something else. Anything yep. could work as long as you're using some sort of visual aid yep. to indicate to the end users which national, which one this is. Yep, and that then means that that's the icon that's added to the desktop. Yep, instead of the default after I view your icon. Right, so we're, so over in MediaGen, when we generated the IETP, we did filtering of content, so we're just getting the French content, and whether that's done with applicability or data module code, numbering, naming conventions, whatever we're choosing. Yeah. Up to them. Yeah. And then we also select, we need a custom icon, and we might be selecting the French icon flag. Yeah. And so, and then we test it, open it on the desktop, and we create a custom desktop icon. And how does that look over on the desktop then, Rita? Yep. So, so what you end up with... These three here. These are all shortcuts. Yep, to a specific, so we've got in fact a French one there on the right. Yep. Um, so that's highlighting. And like you said, those icons could be custom. We'll use default that's viewer ones if you don't give us a custom one. Correct. So you can have your own custom ICO file. Yep. Uh, and all you've got to do is make sure that that's stored inside your resources section of the CSDB. Yep. And then from there, when you're building your IETP, you use it. You simply add it to the section in the resources for your desktop icon. Nice. And it will then give you that, that icon, icon on your desktop. Fantastic. Okay, so that was everything you wanted to share with us today, Absolutely. Rita? Absolutely. Wonderful. And uh, thank you everyone for watching the, today's session on R4i Viewer Other Features, one of our and final fast snap shot series webinar. <laughs> uh, as mentioned, it is the final for the month of June. Uh, we do hope you've enjoyed these sessions and of course feel free to request any topics that we, you would like for us to do uh, in the future. So these are you know, bigger than the three minute videos up on YouTube, not as long as the 45 minute to one hour sessions that we run um, monthly as webinar sessions. We thought we'd try out something in between yeah. um, and people don't have to sort of attend the session. They can uh, just grab these. So customers will have these available in the My Class area for them to watch at any point in time. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, everyone. And we look forward to sharing more of these sessions with you in the future. Fantastic.